and we're back. All right. Apologies for uh, you know being you know rushing through that last video, that last bit, problem number 52. YouTube has a 15-minute uh, you know sort of uh, time limit on all the videos, and uh, I was just about to go over that, so I wanted to make sure that I cut the video before I went over. Otherwise, I'd have to record the video all over again. But uh, let me do some more. Uh, you know, I wanted to explain uh, number 52 a little bit further because that is kind of a tricky question. The most common wrong answer on number 52 is 1 to 3 rather than 3 to 4. Uh, or sorry, uh, I, you know, it's often like uh, 2 to 3 or, or something like that. You know, it, it is a tricky question. And the reason why it's tricky is because um, when people look at the ratio uh, between the, the over 21 folk and the under 21 folk, um, you know, the, the, the problem says that there are three times as many people aged 21 or under, right? So they, they say that there's three to, uh, to one. And so a lot of times people will look at this and just say, oh, it's one to three, that's the answer. But actually, that's not the answer. Remember that they're asking for uh, the ratio between the people who are under 21 to total. And whenever you look at the total, you always have to add everybody involved. So the total includes people over 21 and under 21. So that's why the answer is actually 3 to 4, because 4 is 3 plus 1. Anyway, I just wanted to, to very quickly clarify that point, um, because I did kind of rush through that at the end of the last video. Anyway, let's, uh, let's continue on to number 53. Number 53 has an X in the middle. And uh, let's just pretend that these are perfectly straight lines. 3x degrees. And on the left here, you have 2x degrees. And y plus 30 degrees. Remember, these are supposed to be straight lines. Um, here, you know, the, the GMAT is testing um, your knowledge of, of more geometry root rules. As you know, um, when you add up the angles of a you know, add up angles to, to get a straight line, uh, those angles are supposed to add up to 180 degrees. So what you're going to do here is you're going to set 3x and y plus 30 to 180 and do the same for 2x and uh, 3x. And the question is asking for you to solve for y. And by creating those two equations, we can set them equal to each other and solve for y. So um, let's figure this out. So 2x plus 3x equals 180. And we also know that 3x plus y plus 30 equals 180. Um, well, this one is pretty self-explanatory, so let's, uh, let's figure out the bottom one. Um, subtract 30 from both sides, and you get y plus 3x equals 150. Let's see. 2x plus 3x, 5x equals 180 x equals 36. Plug in the x to the bottom, uh, into this bottom equation, you get 1 plus 108 equals 150, and y equals, uh, what is that, 42. And that is answer choice E. Problem number 54. Square root of 80 plus the square root of 125 equals what? And that's all they give you. So uh, this is a pure, uh, you know, this is a problem that you just have to um, kind of push your way through. Um, 80, uh, let's, let's try to find some factors and see if we can't um, break these square roots into simpler numbers. Uh, 2, 40, 2, 20, 2, 10, 2, 5. So we have four 2's here, so that's a 4 and a 4. So that means we have 4 on the outside, 5 on the inside. Plus, let's do the same here. 5 goes into 125, 25 times. 
five, five. So we have two fives. It's five on the outside, five on the inside. So we've uh, just simplified this equation to four times the square root of five plus five times the square root of five. Add these together, and you get nine times the square root of five. Uh, and that is answer choice A. Boom. They didn't uh, ask us for anything more. Problem 55. Kelly and Chris packed several boxes with books. If Chris packed 60% of the total number of boxes, what was the ratio of the number of boxes Kelly packed to the number of boxes Chris packed? Ah, so another ratio question. Kelly and Chris packed several boxes. Uh, Chris packed 60% of the total. Uh, let's pick a number for, for the total. Because um, it doesn't actually matter what we pick, but since we're dealing with percentages, I, I like to pick 100 because it's the same as saying 100%. Um, so let's pretend that there were 100 different boxes. If Chris packed 60%, that's the same as saying Chris packed 60 of those 100. Um, that means Kelly packed the rest, right? So Kelly packed, what was that, 40%? And that means Kelly packed 40 boxes. And they're saying, what was the ratio of the number of boxes Kelly packed to the number of boxes Chris packed? Uh, different from from that last uh, last problem, they're not asking about the total. They're asking about the ratio between Kelly and Chris. So that's 40 over 60. Kill off the zeros to get 4 over 6. And then divide by 2 to get 2 over 3. That is answer choice E. Number 56. Of the following, which is the closest approximation of... Oh, and then they have this horribly complicated problem. 50.2 times 0 0.49, 199.8. Now, whenever you see a problem like this, you have to remember what the goal of the GMAT is. The goal of the GMAT is not to make sure that you're a human calculator. They're not trying to make sure that you can do all the computation correctly, and they're not going to design questions that, rely, that, that require you to spend more than three minutes on it. Um, what the GMAT tests are your concepts and how good you are at finding shortcuts. So whenever you see a convoluted problem like this, there's probably a shortcut somewhere that you can figure out. Um, in this particular case, you can see that 50.2 is very, very close to 50. Uh, 0 0.49 is very close to 0 0.5. And uh, this number down here is very close to 200. And so what the GMAT here is testing is your ability to round. Uh, usually what I like to do is check the answer choices and make sure that the the actual answer choices are, are different enough to where you can round. Um, in this case, yes, they are they are quite different. So that uh, even if we we uh, round these numbers a little bit off, we'll still get a very close approximation to the answer. So let's do that. So 50 times 0 0.5 over 200. Uh, let's see here. We can uh, actually kill off the zero here to make it easier. Five goes into 20. How many times? Uh, that five goes into 20 four times, so let's get rid of the 50 completely, and uh, 4. So we have 0 0.5 over 4, which is the same as saying 1 half over 4, and that's the same as saying 1 half times 4 over 1, which is what? Ah, I think I've made a mistake. Actually, uh, let's see. This is actually the same as saying, oh, this is where I made the mistake. Uh, this is tricky because 4 is the same as 4 over 1. So when you divide 1 half by 4 over 1, you actually have to invert. So let me try that again. So it's actually 1 half times 1 over 4, and that gets us 1 over 8. And 1 over 8 is one of the answer choices. It's answer choice B. 57. Yeah, see, uh, uh, you know, going back to that last question, as you can see, if you just, uh, you know, if you are careless, you can make very, very simple mistakes like that. And uh, sometimes the GMAT is very forgiving, and uh, you, when you look in the answer choices, you'll realize you made an error, and you can go back and correct it. But sometimes the GMAT can be very fiendish. And what they'll do is they'll actually have the most common wrong answers as answer choices. So you never knew that you got it wrong. You just picked the wrong answer choice because you thought it was right. And then, uh, and then you get your score and you're like, what the heck?
So let's move on to number 57. The average or arithmetic mean of 10, 30, 50, or oh, and 50 is five more. So wait, hold on. Uh, the arithmetic mean, that's these three numbers added together over the number of numbers, so three. So this is equal to five more than, so that's five plus the average of 20, 40, and and some, and the answer, and uh, whatever it is that we're looking for, let's use x, number three, and we're going to find out what x equals. Okay, so how do we get started? Um, this five, I kind of want to get rid of it, so let's uh, multiply it by three to get 15 over three, and then let's add it up. So on the left side, uh, let's add up these numbers. 90 over 3 equals 15 plus 20 plus 40 plus x over 3. This is the same as 60 plus 15 is 75. So it's equal to 75 plus x over 3. We can get rid of the 3s. And we're left with 90 equals 75 plus x equals 90 minus 75 and that gets us our answer which is 15. yes x equals 15 and that is answer choice a Next question, 58. Y equals kx plus 3. In the equation above, k is a constant. If y equals 17, if y equals 17 when x equals 2, then what is y when x equals 4? Well, first thing we want to do is get rid of this pesky constant. So they gave us a set here. Let's plug that in. To this equation. 17 equals 2k plus 3. 14 equals 2k. k equals 7. So we know k equals 7. Let's plug that back into the equation. Now that we don't have a k there, we get y equals 7x plus 3. They give us x here, so let's solve for y. 4 times 7, 28, plus 3. y equals 31. And let's see if 31 is the correct answer. Yes, it is the correct answer. That is answer choice B.